PC Tesla looking to buy lithium mines, but if, if they look and calculate out how much lithium is in the potential in all of their end of life vehicles that they can collect back, I mean, that's a lithium mine on its own, along with nickel, cobalt, and, and manganese as well that they can recover. Welcome back, everybody. My next guest is Zarko Mazelja. He's the CEO of Recyclico Battery Materials, Inc., trading on the TSX Venture under the symbol AMY, formerly American Manganese. Zarko, welcome. Thank you for having me on the show. It's a pleasure to have you. Zarko, let's start with an overview. What is the business of Recyclico Batteries? So Recyclico Battery Materials is uh, all about recycling and upcycling lithium ion battery waste. Um, and you know we have a patented process being able to extract the lithium, nickel, manganese, and cobalt and upcycle it into battery ready materials to be reused in uh, new lithium ion battery manufacturing, uh, essentially closing the loop on the hot topic that is the battery supply chain right now. Yeah, that's, uh, that's fascinating. I've seen a whole bunch of companies saying that they are going to become lithium ion battery recyclers. I have not yet encountered one that actually is a lithium ion battery recycler. And so you have actually recovered and produce or reproduced rather uh, both carbonate and uh, oxide for from lithium battery sources. Yes. Yeah. And, and maybe just to even take a step back, kind of what is lithium ion battery recycling now on the commercial scale? It's what's known as like a pyrometallurgical process, right? Using high heat. Uh, so yes, there is a lot out there in announcements on lithium ion battery recycling, um, you know, talking about how it's done. Uh, but one thing is actually scaling that technology. Um, and we're really fortunate that we started early. So in 2016 is when the, the patent, the process was invented. And yeah, since then we've taken, you know, different sources of lithium ion battery waste, the different chemistries, right? Cause lithium ion batteries are not all the same chemistry. There's different compositions of nickel, manganese, cobalt, and lithium. And yeah, we've made, you know, battery grade lithium hydroxide, lithium carbonate. Um, and not only that, but when it comes to the uh, other metals, we don't just take out the nickel, manganese, and cobalt separately because at the end of the day in the supply chain, they just need to be recombined to make what's known as precursor material. We actually go directly to that precursor material as well. And, and this material has been tested in battery cells by independent parties and, and you know the electrochemical testing of those cells to actually show the performance of that material and, and benchmark it to commercially available uh, commercially available materials out there as well. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's, uh, we, we really got started early and we've taken that from, you know, beaker testing to what we now have in Vancouver, Canada and, and a really scaled up demonstration plant with capacities of, you know, over 500 kilograms per day of, um, uh, the hydrometallurgical processing capacity. So inputting, battery production scrap, black mass material, mm. all those kind of things. So are you selling this reproduced batteries to battery manufacturers? You're not recreating the batteries themselves. You're extracting the material and then offering the material for sale to battery manufacturers? Yes, so slightly. Right now, it's more of this validation and qualification approach, right? Because I think our business model really is another unique one as well where We've taken our patented process and what we look to do is actually integrate the technology with the battery manufacturers or with the EV manufacturers because at the end of the day, they're kind of, they're the gatekeepers of their waste material, right? So unlike a mine where you're sitting on your resource, the biggest risk in this industry is actually getting the supply of material. So we really want to build that technological moat and, and, and integrate that, you know, almost as like a bolt-on recycling facility where future battery manufacturers aren't just making batteries, but they're recycling the waste that they produce as well. And this lets them, lets them maintain control of their materials. So right now we're demonstrating the scale of the process, qualifying those materials with them. Um, and then the business model is to joint venture on multiple, you know, uh, recycling plants and allow for that wide adoption. Mm -hmm. And so how do you source your spent batteries? Where do you get them? So working with these different companies, it's them sending us samples, right? So we've looked at over 
a dozen different black mass samples. So that's the shredded lithium ion batteries. And then as well as scrap from different gigafactories as well that, that send us these materials to test. And then we send them back to finished product. And we're going through that technical due diligence phase of, uh, uh, of, of seeing how we can collaborate on a partnership, right? So we have, you know, looking at more bespoke operations. So on the commercial size plant, you know, we can look at a 6,000 ton per year plant or a 20,000 ton per year plant really depends on that potential partner and how much waste they could be expect to be producing as well. Mm -hmm. So is this something that Tesla would be interested in? I think anybody would be interested if, if you think about it, you know, even if you let, get uh, an intern at some of these companies to calculate the how much lithium, nickel, manganese and cobalt is potential is in this material. Uh, I mean, you see Tesla looking to buy lithium mines, but if, if they look and calculate out how much lithium is in the potential in all of their end of life vehicles that they can collect back, uh, I mean, that's a lithium mine on its own along with nickel, cobalt, and, and manganese as well that they can recover. So, yeah, I, I think, you know, there, there's going to be a big incentive from an environmental perspective to, to benefit on kind of those environmental credits to recover the maximum value. And then as well, we're seeing this big gap in supply and demand of, of the battery materials and, you know, mines that just don't come up fast enough. So recycling kind of helps reduce that reliance on the mined material and, and um, uh, meet, meet some of the new legislation that's coming out as well, right? We see in, in Europe where there's going to be a percent minimum of recycled lithium, nickel, and manganese or a lithium, nickel, and cobalt that has to be in, uh, in new lithium ion batteries as well, right? So the pressure is really on. Sure. So regarding the patent, is it, uh, where was it developed? Who owns it? Do you own it or do you license it? Do you have it exclusively? What's the status? Yeah, the patent is owned by uh, Recyclical Battery Materials. So we do have, we have our original, you know, as you mentioned, we were originally American manganese and, and that's really where the battery recycling patent came from. But we have a patent on the extraction of manganese from low grade resources and that with that know-how pivoted into the development of two patents under the uh, lithium ion battery recycling technology. Now those patents were uh, invented in, uh, or it, the process was invented in 2016. Um, and and uh, they, they have now been granted, the first one's been granted in the US, South Korea, Japan, Australia, China, India, and Canada. Um, and actually even the second patent, so the first one was granted in about 18, or eight, 13 months, I believe, from the filing date. And the second patent was actually the fastest issued patent in the inorganic chemistry category. From filing, it was granted in about 81 days. Um, so it really shows kind of the head start we got on, on this technology um, and, and really all the kind of prior art that, um, you know, there's no, no, no conflicting um, prior art um, during during that application. So, yeah, that was that was that was developed. You know, Re Recyclical owns it. Uh, we work closely with our R and D uh, uh, partner, Cometco Research. Okay. And, um, and what about yeah. sourcing these uh, batteries now? Uh, are you in a crowded space? Are there lots of competitors who are able to do what you do at this point, or are you pretty much alone? at the head of the pack and right now the battery world is your oyster so like like we said you know there's a lot of com companies talking about battery recycling um but when it comes to technology and really looking into the details um i think our technology is is well advanced you know even at at the scale we are um we use very innovative techniques you know we have the patents but we also have a lot of technological know-how in the processing and making of these um, battery grade materials or battery ready materials. Um, and like I said, when, when it comes to sourcing, that, that is the biggest risk in the industry. So you do see a lot of companies right now talking about building recycling plants, um, raising a lot of money to source, source battery waste. 
Um, but I always kind of say, even if you build a 50,000 ton per year plant, doesn't mean you're going to get 50,000 tons per year of batteries. We're taking a really methodical approach in securing a technological lead in battery recycling and that being recognized by industry where we're seeing a, on the long-term approach, a, a more integrated strategy. I think short-term right now, you're going to see a lot of companies maybe make these short-term contracts or partnerships where they're going to get rid of their waste. But long-term, I think they're going to want to be keeping that internally and recycling that material back in-house. I mean, and that's where our technology is going to play a key, key role. So it's not about fighting for the supply right now. It's about building the best technology and that technology is going to be the one that's going to be wanted and integrated where the battery waste is. Mm -hmm. All right, Zarko, that's a great introduction to the company. Very, very interesting technology. We'll be happy to have you back in due course. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you. You bet. Bye for now.